All right, uh, today I'm going to show you what to, to do to use Pixlr. Pixlr is a photo editing software. Uh, first thing you need to do is go to pixlr.com. That's P I X L R.com. Uh, we're going to be using the E version, so you can click on the E. Uh, it's going to come up with some, if you've done anything in the past, it'll come up here at the top when you're at home, but we're going to be creating a new one, so you're going to click Create New. Uh, we're going to be building one in a Web 720, that's 1280 pixels by 720 pixels. Click that, it'll show those there, and then you click Create. Now, we're going to be using a picture of Kobe Bryant that I provided. That's going to be our starting point, so we come over here to Kobe. We're going to click, and we'll, we'll go to Right Click and Copy Image. Now when we come over to Pixlr, if we try to right click, nothing is going to happen. So we have to use the shortcut of Control V or Command V if you're using a Mac to paste that picture. Now if you look here, this picture is too big. These, uh, This checkerboard pattern, as is what it's called, is actually a clear image. So it, they can't it display a clear image. So they put this checkerboard pattern so that all graphic designers will know that that is a clear image. Uh, just like with uh, using other programs, so if we grab that corner up there and we pull down, it shrinks the whole picture. If we grab in the middle, when we've got uh, the four arrows, we can move that up. So we just want to make sure that we move it in where we can get all the picture at one time. Now, let me tell you about these windows uh, or these areas over here. First, this is the navigation area. If you look right here, this navigation area, this uh, red box or orange box, whatever way it looks to you, uh, is what is actually visible. This is your zoom. Uh, if you scroll up or scroll down, if you're using a mouse, you'll see that it zooms. Uh, if you're using a trackpad or you don't want to use the mouse, you can grab and you can drag this. Notice how the little box here gets smaller. And if we need to move around on the picture, we can just move that little box around to find our way around. Uh, you can also click the plus or the minuses, and that moves in 10% increments so that you can move to whichever thing you want uh, to, to view. Uh, next up we have the layers box. And the layer box is very important in the fact that uh, it tells you what active layer you have. So think of this like uh, a piece of paper. So you've got a piece of paper here, and if I click on that, the piece of paper on top of it, I'm not going to be messing with. But if I click on the piece of paper on top, I am no longer gonna be messing with the piece of paper on the back. So every time we add a layer, it's like adding a new piece of paper on top, and each thing is going to cover the thing that is behind it. So if we put information uh, that's on top of another picture, and I'll show you that as a minute as I'm going through, that will cover things, and that's how we're going to build our picture by putting one thing on top of the other. You also see that there are check marks here. Check mark means that it is visible. So if I click this, it says visible. If I click it, then I cannot see Kobe there. He's still there, I can't see him, but if I click again, it's right back. Uh, I'm going to actually uh, talk a little bit about the history first, and then I will go back and I'll show you. We're going to go ahead and do some uh, editing of this software. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see everything. Down here is the history section. Now the history section, um, in, in a lot of the programs, we can use uh, undo. But in the case of Pixlr and a lot of other graphic editing programs, they give you several layers of history. So I made it visible, I made it invisible, uh, I transformed it by making it smaller. This is where I pasted it, and if you notice here, as I click, all the things go back in history. So as I, you can see, I'm just, this gives you, and it gives you about 10 to 15 of these. So if you mess up something, you have the ability to go back several steps to try to fix that. In the graphic editing program, you um, might make some mistakes, but we can always you, we can usually either put stuff on top of it or behind it to fix those things. Uh, I'm going to click on layer one. Layer one is the background layer, and I'm going to go ahead and put a, take the check mark out of image. So that's the that's the Kobe Bryant image. And if you want to, you can right click on it and you can give them names. Uh, we always want to make sure to leave the last thing there. So I'm going to call this Kobe one, uh, and then I'm going to click off of it. Now you see it's Kobe one, and this is layer one. Now down here, uh, these are all the things, and this is where I got all the information for the vocabulary words. Uh, if you put your mouse on it, this is where I took pictures of these things. Uh, and we're gonna use a bunch of these. Uh, in this program, we're actually gonna be going to use the lasso tool, the wand select tool. I'm gonna show you how to use the marquee select tool, the eraser, 
and we're going to use the paintbrush and the gradient. Uh, now first, we're going to talk about these two things here. This uh, white box here is called the foreground color. The foreground color is always on top of the background color. So foreground, background. So if I click on this white box, uh, or white circle in this case, the default is white and black. Uh, but you see here, uh, all of this shades in here. Uh, and what this is, all colors that are in this program are made up to this R, G, and B. That stands for red, green, and blue. Uh, and if you see as I move this, it changed the amount of each one of these things. So if it's really red, you see it's got a lot of red in it, very little green and very little blue. But as I pull down, the more colors, you notice that a color with almost no reflective ability is all zeros. That's R, G, and B, and that is the black color. Now, we're going to be using the, the colors of Kobe's team, and that's going to be uh, the Lakers. So they're going to be yellow, uh, and they're going to be... Uh, Purple. Now you can type uh, directly into these. So if I say 242 by 239 by let's say 69, that's going to give me sort of a yellow. Uh, I'm going to let you choose your own yellow, but we want to have something in the darkish yellow area. Uh, and we can always go back and change those if we need to. But you hit OK once you find your color. Notice that now. That foreground color is chosen uh, is the color that you chose. Now we're going to click on the background color. Same process. You can type in the R, G, and the B. Uh, we're going to move this over. We're going to click the circle. If I can get a hold of it. Now sometimes you have to just click. And you notice that it will pop it over there. And uh, we're going to put that somewhere around in that area. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. Sometimes I'll give you the numbers. Sometimes I won't. Uh, most of these are going to be your own visual uh, description, so you're going to have to have a, a little bit of an artistic eye and try to make it look the best you can, uh, but you're going to have a little bit of free reign on this, uh, and if you have questions or anything, you always you know, want to just send me a, me a message, and I'll be able to answer it for you. Now, uh, let me show you what the draw tool uh, does. Now, this is a draw. Notice that when I click on something, it brings up a new category at the top. Uh, in this case, this is a draw tool, and it brings up brushes. And if I click on this little circle, it brings up all these preset brushes, and all these preset brushes are different shapes. Uh, they're different sizes. Uh, I'm going to use the one that's already made. Now, this is how big the size is. So this gives you an idea, idea how big the, the, the size is going to be. So if I go up in size, it gets bigger. If I go down in size, it gets smaller. Softness, if I make this bigger, you're going to see, see how soft the edge is. Um, if I pull this up, it's going to make a nice soft edge. Now the step talks about how far they are apart. So as you see here, if I pull this apart, if I wanted to make dotted lines, uh, this is a way of doing that. I don't want to make dotted lines. I want to do a hard line this time with a hard edge, but I'm going to show you some of the things this will do, and then we're going to draw over this, but this is just demonstrating for you how this works. So if I click off, it's always going to paint your foreground color. So if I click over here, now notice I'm on the wrong layer. So that's why you can't see anything. If I click this layer back, notice that now you can see that. I accidentally painted on the wrong layer. I'm going to come over here using the history. And I'm going to click. And I went back to draw. Still there. So I'm going to go up another layer. Now you notice it's not there anymore. So I've got to click on the right layer all the time to make sure I'm doing the right thing. Now notice that this just draws, just like it says. It's a draw tool. If I were to hold shift, it draws straight lines. So shift, wherever you end and wherever you click again is where it starts. So I just ended right here. If I move my, if I hold shift and I click here, it draws a straight line. Uh, but let's say you wanted to get a little fancier. Now up here, uh, you see this thing where it says mirror. Now, I know you guys have probably seen this before, but if you mirror four ways, um, let me, uh, I'm going to use the eraser tool for right now, and I'm going to get rid of this right here so you guys can see what this uh, does. Now, the, the eraser tool, just like the brush tool, you can erase in different uh, sizes and different shapes. Uh, I'm just going to use a big eraser here so I can clean this off for you. But uh, every time you paint over something, it paints right over the top of it, so you keep that in mind. I've got the mirror tool on, and I know you guys have seen this before, but I really love to do this. I'm doing one painting, and it's painting in four ways. 
And this again, if I hold shift, boom, 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 boom. It makes all sorts of different things. Uh, you always want to go back in and try to put these back to where they originally were. Uh, if you click the brush here, uh, you can always click one of these. And that was the original one it was set on, but you can choose whichever one you want. Uh, but keep in mind, when you play with these a little bit more, you'll get a, a little bit more at ease with it. Uh, but now I want to show you the gradient tool. Now this is the gradient. It creates a blend with different colors. Now the colors it uses are your foreground and your background. So if you look here, you've got yellow to purple. Linear means that it's going to be in a line. So uh, if I click to start the line and then I finish the line, notice that it puts the beginning color, which is yellow, that's your foreground color, to your background color, which is purple. Uh, if I do a shorter line, it does a harder middle. If I do a longer line, more blending. If I want it to go top to bottom, left to right, right to left, whichever way you want it to be. Uh, for my purpose today, I'm going to do a left to right with a big blend in the middle. Now, let's pull, let's put Kobe back. Now, we haven't done anything with him. He's been hanging out back there by himself. We're going to click on the Kobe layer. And what I want to do is I want to remove all of this stuff in the background except for Kobe and the basketball. Now, I've got lots of ways to do that. Uh, I could use the eraser tool. Now, remember, I set the eraser really big, so if I tried to click now, it's going to take a lot, a lot of space off of him. So I'm going to pull this back down. Now, see how big that is. Uh, I'm, I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see this. And I know, it's, again, I'm on the Kobe layer. And all I've got to do is just click one time and then drag. Okay. Now, you can use that to erase. Uh, I could use the marquee tool. The marquee tool can be a rectangle or a ellipse, which is a circle. Uh, if it's a rectangle, the only thing it'll let you draw is a rectangle. And then you push the delete button. What you see are these little things here. Uh, this is what they refer to as running ants. Now, the running ants keep you from doing anything outside of them. So let's say I click back over to that eraser, and I'm just going crazy right here. I'm trying to erase, but it's not working. But if I come up here... Notice that I cannot go outside the running ants. The running ants protect what we're doing. Uh, but if we want a faster way of doing that, instead of going with the eraser tool, I can just push the delete button. And it will delete anything inside the running ants. Uh, we also have the lasso tool. Now the lasso tool, as the name implies, lassos are circles. So you draw a shape, let it go, and then push delete. Now, whatever tool you want to use, any of these tools are available for you to use to get these things done. Now, notice again, without any running ants, I can use the eraser tool anywhere I want. And so what you want to do is, and what I like to do is I like to erase uh, with the eraser in large areas. And then I uh, use the lasso tool. See how I kind of messed up his head there? So I'm going to back up a step. But if you use the lasso tool, whatever's inside the lasso, what you'll be deleting. So you want to make sure you go outside of what you're doing. And you notice there's an ad that keeps popping up at the bottom, which is okay because they're nice enough to let us use this website for free. And then we push delete. And if you don't want to see the ad, you can always do that. Uh, it's going to help you to zoom in on these things uh, because that way you can get a much tighter uh, area of deleting. Now, if you've got running ants on and you want to turn them off, you just make sure that you have a the lasso tool on and just click anywhere outside of the running ants, uh, and it will remove them. So you're going to take your time, and you're going to go through, and you're going to delete all that. I'm not going to show you that whole thing in the video because that's something you're going to need to do. Uh, to move Kobe uh, or anything else you're using, you're going to use the arrange tool. You notice that I have no running ants on, and then we're going to pull him. Now, this is, a case, again, a case where we could change how big he is. I'm going to move him over here for now. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to find another picture of Kobe. Uh, because what we're going to do is we're going to put three pictures of Kobe Bryant on here. Uh, and you're going to get a chance to choose whichever other two you want. Uh, I like action shots. And you'll notice that a lot of these have a, a background that is very uh, much similar. So look at this background compared to this background. This background's got a lot of different colors, a lot of different things. This background is pretty much a one dark color. So to make it easier on me, I'm gonna choose this one and I'm gonna click to go to that picture. 
uh, and get the full size because what you want to you want to use big pictures in these if you can. Now, uh, if I can't get that full size picture on here, I might just go back and I might uh, use another one. Uh, but we'll see if we can get that picture to show up. Uh, sometimes you'll have to scroll down to find the picture. Uh, we want to only, in this case, have a picture of Kobe. So even though this is a good picture, I want to continue to look for that picture that I was looking for a minute ago. Okay, again, lots of different colors. It's going to take me a long time to cut that out. So I'm trying to look for that picture that I saw at the beginning. Uh, sometimes it's at the top, sometimes it's not. But you might have to scroll through. Now, if you don't want to go through all that trouble, you can, of course, go back. And uh, what, what I don't like is that you could use this picture, but this is not going to be a very big picture. I'll show you here. I'm going to copy this image, and I'm going to come back over here. And just like before, I'm going to hit Control-V. Now, it gave me the big image. Now, you notice, if I zoom out, that this is bigger than my box here. So again, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and I'm going to shrink it down to where it all fits inside of there. Now, I'm going to click and I'm going to zoom in. Now, uh, in this case, you see that there's a lot of similar background colors. So I could go in with the eraser tool again and do all those other things, but I'm going to use the wand select. Now, the wand select says it uses the magic wand to select areas with similar colors. So when I click that, I'm going to try to click this whole area right here. And when I click it, notice that it actually almost outlines him perfectly. So without me having to do any work other than use that magic wand tool, I've got all this done for me. Now this again, because it's a picture, it's notice that this is a new layer that we're on. We're not on the Kobe layer and we're not on the background layer. This is the only layer it's affecting. Now the only thing I see as a problem is right here. And if you'll look here. See how this is uh, being picked up? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the lasso tool. And if you look up here, it says add to selection or remove from selection. Now remember the, the running ants are selecting things. So let's say I want to go back and I want to keep these. So I'm going to go remove from selection. And I'm going to use the lasso tool inside the running ants to keep that section right there. So all of that work that we would have had to do with the eraser, I've done. And now all I got to do is push delete. Well, unless I accidentally unselect it. Not an image file. Now, you see what that says when I push delete? Not an image layer, okay? That's because I accidentally clicked off the layer. See that? No layer is selected. So click on the layer again, push delete. Easy fixes. Now, couple of small little tiny problems and you might not even be able to see them but there's a little tiny dot there and a little tiny dot over here you might not be a perfectionist like I am but when I click it I see that little dot I'm just going to use that eraser tool I turn the running ants off click and click and now we've got a whole other picture of Kobe already done okay that right there had a little color on it too now I'm going to take that, again, using the Arrange tool, and I'm going to move him over here. Just we need to get one more picture of Kobe. And we'll, we're almost done with this, and this is just in the video here. So uh, we're gonna, I'm going to look for a picture of Kobe uh, in an action shot, maybe uh, dunking the ball. Uh, I want to use three different pictures because that way uh, it gives me more perspective. Now, I could use this one. Um, but his face is very similar. Uh, I want to see if I can find another one. Now, you have your choice of pictures, whichever one you want to use. You choose which ones you like. Uh, and But like I said, you can use ones that have lots of color in them, and you can use ones that have very little color. Uh, and that's going to be your choice on this particular item. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to choose those pictures that you like, use them to create your final product. I think I'm gonna use this one. Same thing, we're gonna copy the image, go back, and we're gonna paste it. Just like before, this has got a very similar background color, so I'm gonna use the one select tool. Okay, notice that again, this color is not similar, so I'm going to use the lasso tool, but instead of this time using remove, although I'm gonna go ahead and remove this, 
when I'm going to use add, so I'm going to use add, and I'm going to add these in. Uh, and now I'm going to go remove, and I'm going to zoom in here because I don't want to get too much of his head out of the picture. Okay, and so again, put that in. You see there's still some that we want to get rid of, so again, uh, you're going to take your time, uh, get this fine detail in, uh, because once I put him on the background, if he's got these holes in his head, you're going to be able to see yellow through the top of his head, and that's probably not going to look so good. So now I've got it pretty well done. I'm going to go again, make sure that layer is selected, and then push delete. Now, in these areas where his arms are here, we want to get rid of that also. So back to the wand select, click on the inside, push delete, push delete. Notice again, see how this is cut out of his armpits? So we want to go back a little bit. Okay, click, go back in here, remove. Uh, I'm gonna remove his arm there. And I'm gonna remove this little section here of his jersey and delete that. We're gonna do the same thing over here. And as you can see here, this is gonna be something that you will need to play around with. Um, notice that I didn't get that part out, but you know what? I'm going to smooth it out with my eraser tool and make it look a little bit more blended in. Now, uh, at this point, you need to select what is going to be your main focal point. Now, obviously, you want to have this all cut out, but your main focal point, uh, I'm going to use this Kobe as my main focal point. So I'm going to, I'm going to make him artistically bigger than everything else. I'm going to put him right there in the center. I'm going to take my other Kobe over here. Whoops. Didn't get my other Kobe yet. There he is. Oh, no. I still haven't got him. Notice that every time I try to click, there's a box right there that gets in the way. So I'm going to take him and I'm going to right click on this layer. And that's going to give me this transparency. Now, the transparency allows me to make him more see through. Okay, so I'm going to make him more of a background image. And I noticed when this is on top, so if I put it on top of here, just like if you put a piece of paper on top of another piece of paper, it's going to cover up that piece of paper. Uh, this is going to be my focal point, so I'm going to have it bold uh, or easier to see. I'm going to do the same thing with my other co uh, Kobe here. I'm going to right-click. And remember, you can name all these, especially when you start getting several layers. It's good to name them. I'm going to fade him out a little bit more, so now we've got... Uh, this is our main Kobe, and we've got our other uh, Kobe here in the background. Uh, once you've got this finished, which you will, of course, cut out and make it look uh, the best way you want it to, you'll go to File. You'll go to Export as um, a Export Layers. No, we want to export the entire image, okay? Uh, actually, I think this one's save. Yep, we want to save it as a JPEG. So you'll call that... Uh, Kobe picture or whatever you want to call it, you'll save it as a JPEG in high and you'll hit download. That's the file that you will add and turn into me to get your full credit. Uh, the next assignment will be something similar in which you will be building something with images using some more of these skills. We'll talk more about some of these other things in our next video. Please make sure you get these things done and turned in.